Sports Source is brought to you by Franklin Motor Company in Franklin, Tennessee. Visit them at 3823 Dickerson Road, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. Or give them a call at 615-865-7350 or find them on the web at franklinmotorstn.com. Welcome to Sports Source from Mellow Mushroom Live in historic downtown Franklin. I'm in here with Daryl Stone, uh, who's the marketing manager of Mellow Mushroom in Franklin, Nashville, and West Palm Beach. So how long has Mellow Mushroom been here in Franklin? I'd say we're getting on about uh, a little over 10 years, probably about 12 years. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, your happy hour specials and what people can look for. Okay. Well, we have a happy hour Monday through Thursday, uh, 3 to 7, and we do, we're doing uh, dollar off craft drafts and $2 domestics and dollar off all wines. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And also on the weekends, you have Build Your Own Bloody Marys. That's right. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays between 11 and 4, you can build your own Bloody Mary. They start at, start at $5, so we have a ton of toppings to choose from. Awesome. And we also know that you're well known for your pizza, so tell us about the Pizza by the Slice deal. We can do uh, Pizza by the Slice Monday through Friday. Um, we, we cut that off at 2 o'clock, so it's just for lunchtime only. Awesome. And tonight you guys have bingo going on here. What, what other kind of events do you guys have on a regular basis? Well, bingo is a huge hit. I mean, it started off pretty good, and now it's just everybody seems to come out for bingo. So we also do trivia on Mondays, and we have a uh, tap takeover on Tuesdays where we feature new draft, new breweries, and then you can come out on Wednesdays for live reggae. And uh, the big thing we do is uh, every second Saturday, Beatles cover band 64 will play live here on the square. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Kirsten. Uh, I'm here with Zachary Harmouth. Here on Sports Source, talking about we made it through the NCAA basketball season. We did. We did it, even with the new emphasis on fouling and a lot of free throws, a lot of games. A lot of games. Gosh, I, I, I watched the Kentucky North Carolina game, Zach. Yeah. Ninety free throws. Yes. Ninety. It's a lot of guys were fouling out. You had guy. That's not why we go to the games to watch star players sitting on the bench. Yeah, sure. You don't. You know, you see, you know, games can get get extended. You know, the last two minutes, you see, you know, 10, 15, 20 free throws. Um, you know, that's not why you go to the games. You go to the games because they're fast-paced, back and forth. Right. But, um, you know, you have to balance that with maintaining a, you know, a certain style of play. You can't get too aggressive. If the fouls are there, you got to call them. Right. So um, that's why we're here talking about the new new rule. Yeah. Go over that. And that's uh, actually it was head coach of uh, Belmont, uh, Belmont Bruins, Rick Bird, who actually was a part of that committee who put, who put in this new emphasis. His team adjusted to it fine. I think it's something that the players will have to adjust to, the coaches will have to adjust to. But that is going to be the new rule. It's going to be the stillness next year. So we'll see if players do adjust. Teams that play this up-tempo style, obviously it, it affects them a little more. We're here with Bill Harris. He was a, a referee for many years. Uh, Bill, what do you think about this new emphasis on fouling that we saw this year? Well, uh, the games uh, uh, are more physical, and they're coached to be that way. So, And the officials pretty much have to you know, play the hand that they're dealt on that particular night. So if the teams that choose to be physical, then they have to call the fouls. It's, it's not like they go out there thinking of just calling fouls uh, or blowing the whistle. But when it gets physical, you, you have to be in control of it. If you don't, it'll escalate, and then it gets rough, and then you could have a, a fight or that something of that nature. So I don't think of, I know with officials, we don't want to see 90 free throws. We yeah. want to see like <laughs> none. Yeah, play. exactly. So, uh, but you, you know, you have to you have to do with your job. You have to do what you got to do. So. Yeah, it sounds like you're talking about um, you have to kind of keep a control of the game, set the tone with how you how you make your calls. Um, well, how do you how do you balance that with um, just allowing players to play as a as a referee? How do you good make good question? Good question. Uh, when when I when I when I officiated, yeah, we do we, we talk. So we're out of, we're the underneath guy. He's he's talking. Hey guys, get your hands off. You know, uh, give me some separation there. Need a little daylight. We talk and we tell them before the game. Now we're gonna talk to you. Mm -hmm. Listen to us. You know, you want you don't want to get in foul trouble. You need to listen. Talking. Zach brought up a good point that that some of these calls are are really tough to make. I think the most bang bang call maybe in all of sports that charge block call. How tough is it to? To tell, I mean, in, a, in an instant, you got to make that call. I mean, right. and that is a tough call to make, right. just seeing it live. 
How t I mean, from your experience, how tough is it? Well, the more you see, I mean, the more the one of those situations you're in, the more you see, the better you get at, at making those calls correctly. Yeah. Uh, you want to make sure you, you the play's coming to you and your buddy's right across, you want to make sure if you got two whistles, you both have the same thing. Uh, you want to sell the call. So if you have two whistles, I'm going to give eye contact. And I, they should be given to the officials coming to, in most cases, there's some exceptions to that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then, then the call needs to be sold. You don't want to have two guys looking at each other and both of them blow the whistle and nobody makes a call. So then right. now, sure. now whether you get it right or not, everybody in the gym is going to think that you don't know or right. those kinds of things. So, so you have to be able to, to step up. Good, good eye contact. Go. Usually, if you work with the guys a lot, you don't have those kind of problems. Uh, but it, anything can happen on any given night. Well, I was going to ask, what um, what does it feel like? You know, you're in a in a big game. You know, the fans are kind of going wild, and you have to make a call that goes against the home team. And you know, I'm sure the crowds are booing, booing you, saying, you know, uh, the refs blind. You know, can't see. What what does that feel like in the moment when you yeah. you know you're making the right call, but everyone in the entire stadium is going to be, you know, not like you for it. <laughs> you know, I love those situations. I mean, I want, I want them to come to me. I, yeah. I mean, I really do. And I'm all over. I mean, I'm watching and I know when I see the action, I know whether I need to call it or don't need to call it or whatever. So, so I, I really, if, we, if the three of us are doing the game, I want it in. I'm in my mind, I'm going, I want this point. I want it coming to me. I, I want to make this call if it needs to be made. Yeah. It's just yeah. as important not to call something than it is to call something. So young officials, they feel like they got to blow the whistle and call something when, in fact, if it's not yeah. there, don't call. Don't call. Don't yeah. just call something. So, so that's where experience kicks in. So, and most of the guys that I work at the highest level with, they all look just like you know they want to play, and and they help, we help each other. So. Uh, if, if you make a call, I was working a, a game one night, uh, an SEC game, and my buddy makes a call and he runs right to the table and he goes, I, I forgot the number of his foul. He's the guy in the foul. You know? yeah. and, I, and I just, you know, and again, every time a whistle blows, you got two numbers in your head. You got the person that fouled and the person that's going to shoot. Yeah. And out to 42 foul. He said, okay. And they, even now, that's been 20 years ago, he, when I see him, he says, I, he just, I just couldn't remember. But see, <laughs> that's why we're, we're prepared yeah. to do those games. You have, everybody has to do their job. There is no cruising up and down the floor. Maybe in a blowout, you can, you can ease it off a little bit. Yeah. You gotta be on. Yeah. All right, Bill, thank you for coming on and, and talking to us about that. I think it, it, it's interesting because seeing this game from, from your point of view, I mean, obviously, we watch the games, and as fans, we're quick to blame a game on an official, yeah. quick to go, oh, the reason we lost, because the refs cost us the game. You know, it's so easy to do yeah. that as fans. It's easy to use you, know, you guys as the cop-out, you, you know, and, right. and, and it's, ni it's nice to see it from your vantage point. So I really appreciate you yeah, coming on. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, nobody feels any worse than making a mistake at the end of the game, and, and, and you know you made it, and it might change the outcome of the game. Uh, and the, the, pit, the official that makes it, I mean, nobody feels any worse than that person. So, uh, and, it, and you just got to go on. It happens. It happens all the time. And I don't say it happens every day, but it happens. And, uh, and it, it, like I say, it's not like they just blow it off and go, well, that's, that's the way right. it goes. Yeah. It, most of it bothers them. So, anyway, right, I appreciate Bill, you, you asking me. Yeah. Uh, and, yes. uh, Bill Harris, thank I you for coming out it. to Mellow Mushroom. Thank you. Glad to be here.